Are you a sucker for classic 90s games, but struggling to get them working on your Steam Deck? This guide will show you how to get them up and running in just a few minutes. Depending on where you get your games from, you'll need to install them first. For the sake of this tutorial, we're going to be using SimCity 2000, Aladdin, and Earthworm Jim as examples. If you bought the game from GOG, you'll actually want to use the Heroic Game Launcher in order to install them. It's the simplest method. The first step is to go into desktop mode. Launch the Discovery Store and then install Heroic. Many games will launch from here without issue, but if you're like me and you want to be able to play your DOS games from game mode without having to first launch Heroic, or if you're also like me and some of your DOS games don't actually launch from Heroic, no sweat. We've got you covered here with this tutorial. So the first step is to install whichever games that you want to play in DOSBox. Here it's SimCity 2000. By default, games will install to your home directory, games, heroic, and then the name of the game. Next, we'll need to install DOSBox, the MS-DOS emulator that we'll be using, and FlatSeal, which will give DOSBox the necessary permissions to actually run the game. You can install both applications with a terminal command, flatpack install flathub com.dosbox.dosbox, and flatpack install flathub com.github.tchx64.flatseal. Capitalization is important here. Alternatively, if you don't like the command line, you can actually uh, install both of these apps with Discover, just like we did with Heroic. Once you have both of them installed, launch Flatseal and select DOSBox from the left pane. Scroll down to the right until you come across File System. Under Other Files, click the folder icon to add a new folder and then set the file path to wherever your DOSBox games are located. In my case, it's slash home slash deck slash games with an uppercase G. Again, capitalization is important here. Alternatively, you can simply give it the home permission and then DOSBox has access to your entire home directory. If your games are installed to your micro SD card, you'll actually want to add uh, slash run slash media as well. We need to do this so that DOSBox has access to these paths, otherwise DOSBox would get a permission error. Our next step is to head to our Steam library. Click the plus add a game button at the bottom left of the Steam client. Select add a non-Steam game from the menu, hit the browse button, and from here head to the directory that we installed our game in. If you don't see the game's binary files, make sure that you change the file type to all files. For SimCity, we're going to add the sc2000.bat executable here. Add it to your library, and then find it in your library. Right-click on it and select Properties. Now, in the target field, we're going to add flatpack run com.dosbox.dosbox. This is going to go right at the very beginning, and we're going to make sure to leave the path that was originally there intact, surrounded in quotes. If you have a DOSBox configuration file, you can go ahead and add that here too, taking care to prefix the config file with the dash conf flag. While we're in here, we can actually give the library entry a better name, uh, and then we can close the window. Now we should be ready to rock and roll. Click play, and boom, look at that, it's working. SimCity 2000 on the Steam Deck. And there we go, we should be able to launch this from game mode just like we do from desktop. Now, unfortunately, this is actually not a surefire method. Uh, DOSBox can be fickle at times, and because of that, we're actually going to have to explore another option. But before we get to that, let me ask you a question. Are you enjoying this video? Want to see more like it? Make sure you like that smash button and smash that subscribe button. It's the only way to stay up to date with all the cool stuff that we're doing here on the channel. We're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the summer, and I think, with your help, we can do it. And thanks. Now, like I said, there's a more involved way that requires making bash scripts. Uh, this can be useful if you find a rare example of uh, the previous method not working. Earthworm Jim, for example, posed an issue for me. So let's make a bash script. There's no particular place where this needs to go. You can put it on your desktop or somewhere in the home folder. I'm gonna put it in the games directory. So let's navigate to the games directory in your file manager. And then let's right click and let's create a new text file. Name the script to whatever you want, but I like to end my scripts with a .sh file extension. In my case, I named it earthworm underscore Open the newly created script with a text editor. 
Uh, KDE Plasma has KWrite installed by default, but you can actually use other text editors if you wish. Uh, and then you're gonna add the following lines. Uh, take care to ensure that uh, you're you're starting this with the uh, the crunch bang as we call it in the Linux world, the uh, the pound symbol and the exclamation point, uh, and then you're going to specify slash bin slash bash. Uh, this first line here is going to actually change the working directory of the script to the Earthworm Jim's data directory, and then we're going to use the same kind of command that we did before. Uh, flat pack run com.dosbox.dosbox and then the executable file for Earthworm Jim. But then we're going to save the file and then mark it as executable by right clicking on it, going to properties, going to the permission tab and checking the box for is executable. Now try executing the script and see if the game actually runs. Um, certain titles from GOG will have actual DOSBox configuration files written for them, such as the case with uh, Disney's Aladdin. Now if you browse the game files, you'll see uh, dosbox underscore aladdin.com. You can use this file, which should be optimized for this game in, uh, specifically. So let's right click uh, and create a new shell script for Aladdin. Uh, create a new file and then give it a name ending in .sh. In this case, we're going to say aladdin.sh and then we're going to open that file in our text editor. Again, let's input the following. Uh, but notice here that we have the dash conf flag followed by dosbox underscore aladdin.conf. We also are following that with um, a path to the aladdin.exe file. Uh, and, you know, if you're looking for these actual files, we can actually switch back to the file manager to grab the correct values to put into the script. So we're going to right click on uh, dosbox underscore aladdin.sh and then select copy location from the context menu. We're gonna go back to the text editor and we can paste that in here, taking care to surround uh, this path with uh, quotation marks. We're gonna do the same thing with the executable file. Uh, we're gonna to navigate to the data directory, and then we're gonna right click on aladdin.exe and select copy location. And then we're gonna paste it into another set of quotation marks. So now we save and close the text editor. We're gonna right click on properties, go to the permission tab again, and then check the is executable box. Now we should be ready to run the script and if we did it correctly, the game should boot into a full screen mode uh, using the actual GOG specified DOSBox configuration. You also might wanna add the script as a non-Steam game, which you can do uh, as we did above, just navigate to that directory where you saved uh, the .sh file in, uh, make sure that you set the file type to all and then import it. Now, if you're having trouble with sound, I found that if I modified DOSBox's configuration file in slash home slash deck dot var app com dot DOSBox dot DOSBox, uh, we can actually make audio work in certain games. I found that adjusting the S Blaster IRQ from seven to five, it made the sound work in SimCity, but leaving it at seven worked for most of the games that I tried. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't recommend Luxter Peta or uh, Boxtron in this guide, it's because they didn't actually seem to work reliably for me. Uh, Boxtron didn't work for me at all, and uh, Luxter Peta only successfully launched one of the five DOS games that I was able to uh, try with it. Um, there is a list of compatible games uh, for Luxter Peta, and uh, the one that actually launched for me didn't uh, isn't actually in that list. I think Boxtron actually would be fantastic here, but as it stands, the only versions that are available, the manual install and the flat pack, they're actually incompatible with the Steam Deck for various reasons. They're missing dependencies and the like. So we've got to do it the manual way, and that's quite unfortunate. But you know what? I think that's actually going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I would love to know what you think about all this. What DOS games do you want to play on your Steam Deck? And are there better methods for getting DOSBox working on the Steam Deck? Let me know in the comment below. I would love to hear from you. I want to give a special shout out to Marcus Batson, one of my top tier Singularity members on Patreon. It's because of folks like Marcus that I've been able to grow this channel into what it's become today. So thank you. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you want to see this show grow, consider making a monthly pledge with the links below and becoming a Linux warrior. And thanks again. But that's it for now. I hope you all have a blessed day and I'll see you next time.